to the SCI chat room. Today's conversation is about the benefits of Thanksgiving. Benefits of Thanksgiving is by Senior Pastor Adama Segiji. You can watch the full message on our YouTube channel, Sojourn Chapel International. Sincere Thanksgiving has a lot of benefits and we'll be exploring some of them today. My name is Margaret and joining me for the conversation are Ella, Pastor Halima and Shinge. Welcome to the chat room, Pastor Halima. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me, Margaret, and the, the rest of the team. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Welcome to the chat room, Ella. Thanks for having me. Hello, Pastor Lima. Hello, Shinge. Thank you, Margaret. To the chat room, Shinge. Hi. Nice to see you, Margaret and Ella and Halima. It's always good to meet up with you guys. Thank you. Good to see you. How important. Is Thanksgiving in the life of a believer and what are some of the benefits? Um, I was really touched when Pastor mentioned that um, Thanksgiving is demanded by God and I liked it when he mentioned people through the Bible from David all the way to Jesus and they always started their prayers with Thanksgiving before they did anything significant and profound and Thanksgiving brings us into the presence of God it calms our spirit. God welcomes a thankful person. It gives us, it brings us into his presence. It multiplies everything. It has the power to liberate somebody else as well. So thanksgiving, a spirit of gratitude is something that always pleases God. It, plays, it blesses him and it draws us closer to him. Thank you, Shinge. What are your thoughts, Ella? Well, when it comes to thanksgiving, the Bible tells us um, in Psalm 100, telling us about entering his gates with thanksgiving and entering to his courts with praise. When we develop that attitude of thanking God, let's not even, if we don't even mention God, let's say your father, your mother, your friends do something for you and you're not able to say thank you. You can imagine with that friend one to say, oh yeah, I'm going to give this person, I'm going to help this person again. It wouldn't feel you won't feel happy to do it. You might feel obliged, you might feel obligated to, but with thanksgiving, the Bible tells us about entering his gates with thanksgiving, tells us about entering his courts with praise. When you come into, like um, Shingi has said, you're able to come into his presence. Thanksgiving brings us into the presence of God. When you start to thank God, the praises flow after that because it's, it's, it's joy. The pastor mentioned in his message that there's, there's joy in thanking God. You need joy to thank God. You can't have a sad face. You can't have a sad demeanor. You can't have a depressed, you can't be in a depressed state and want to thank God. So thanking God is like, it's like the air that we breathe. It's, it's absolutely necessary for our existence for us to dwell in his presence. Thank you. Thanking God is absolutely necessary for our existence. Um, I like that. Oh, uh, wow. And, um, like you said, this has been such a profound message, uh, the attitude of thanksgiving. Uh, you see, when Pastor was teaching this message, uh, like you've all said, you know, bit, uh, Sister Shingi, Sister Ella, the things they've mentioned, thanks, bring, uh, thanksgiving is profound. And besides that, thanksgiving must be an attitude. It must be an attitude. Sister Shingi mentioned that thanksgiving is a commandment it's required of us by god it's not something that we can wade away from because if we do there are consequences and when if we don't there are consequences and if we do there are benefits so it's it's profound it's important sister ella mentioned that let's let's put the idea of thanking god only first on the side and she said, even if it's to your friends, your mother, your workplace, or your parents, your own children thanking you or the attitude they have of being grateful. Uh, the one thing that brings out from what Sister Ella said is that when we have an attitude of thanksgiving, in essence, we actually have the key for more. When we give thanks, it opens doors for more. So with some of the benefits like uh, the, the, the you know in the bible in the book of psalms when it's, we, we we read about david or when you hear about jesus and his attitude of thanksgiving every time they gave thanks what they, they gave thanks god for was multiplied so every time we thank god 
the attitude is a way of getting more. So we, we might not be, uh, some, something profound that pastor said in the preaching of this message was, there are things we have achieved in life that you wonder, how did this even come about? Because I didn't even pray for it. The reason was because your attitude of giving thanks to God always has multiplied you in other areas that you did not even delve into at that point. But because God has seen your gratefulness for all things at all times, then he is blessing you. So we can't, it has to be an attitude and it has to be at all times. It doesn't matter the consequences. It doesn't matter the circumstance, whatever you're going through. Uh, you know, a good time, a bad time, give thanks God or to God always, always. I think the key I've taken from all you've said is that Thanksgiving is absolutely necessary for our daily living. And thank you for the input. There is something that Pastor said. He said that we shouldn't allow wherever we find ourselves or whatever we find ourselves in to stop us from giving thanks. He used the scripture of Paul and Silas in prison, and they began to pray, um, to pray and sing praises and the prison doors were open. That goes to show that Thanksgiving has the ability to bring us out of every prison that we find ourselves in. So from my question here is, how can we remain thankful to God during challenging times? I'll start off with Ella. So thinking about this, I think for me personally, and through my own experience as well, and I think this would, be, this would work for everyone if we try to put it in practice is, now, we all go through challenging times in our lives. We have seasons, the night season, the, the morning season, we have seasons in our lives, and we all go through challenging times. That's, that's, that's inevitable, it's gonna happen. The important thing is how we bring ourselves out of it, how we deal with it when we are in that period. For me, what I tend to do is to take myself back to the times where God has been so faithful, the times where I have been able to say, Indeed, it has been God who has done this. The times of where my gratitude was so intense, where I had to say, ah, if it hadn't been for God who had done this for me, where would I be? So if he did it then, considering the circumstance or the situation I was at the time, if he did it then, then this is nothing. He can always do it again. So challenging times will come. So it would be, it would be a lie for anyone to say to, to any other person, oh, don't worry. Once you go through this challenge, that's it. You will never have a challenging time again in your life. That's not possible. Whether it's in our workplace, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our, our relationships with family or with, with friends, there will always come challenging times. But we always have to remember and think of where God has brought us out from. And when we start to thank God for the place where he has brought us out from, you find out that the place where you are in now seems to be nothing. And before you know it, that time is over. And all about giving thanks, giving thanks, giving thanks. And this, like what Pastor Lima said, when we are thanking God, you can be guaranteed of multiplication. If you are thanking God for, even in the challenging time, you are thanking God for the joy that you feel in your heart, whether you feel it or not, at the end of the day, you have to speak. Our words are life. You have to speak it. So if you are saying, God, I thank you for the joy. I thank you for, for the thing that you are believing God for. Start to th thank him for it, whether you see it or not. Start to thank him for it. And before you say anything, you are already in that position. You're already in that place where you are thanking God for that situation. You're already in that situation. So it's all about, for me, it's remembrance to the things that God has done. Never forget what he has done. Never forget his benefits, like he tells us in, in the book of the Psalms. Don't forget his benefits. Don't forget, you know, all the things that he has done. If you bring to remembrance all the things that he has done, you will know that of, of a surety, this is just a phase and it will pass as long as we keep thanking God for it. Like you say, it's a demand. God demands that we thank him for it. If he didn't demand it, he won't say to the lepers, where, where are the other nine? Mm -hmm. why, why is it just you who has come back? Mm -hmm. Where are the other nine? You know, it wouldn't bother. It would just, oh yeah, you've come to say thanks. Oh, there's no problem. Forget it. You know, but he says, where are the other nine that were healed? Why is it just mm. you? And because he came back to say, thank you for healing me, all that, all that benefits and all that blessings were added onto him. He was made complete. He was made whole. So this is, this, is, this is where I always put myself. Just take, I always say, take yourself back to where God was faithful. Take yourself back to where God did these amazing things for you. And then circumstances, challenges of today, they will become a, a past, a thing of tomorrow, of yesterday, I beg your pardon. So take yourself back to where God 
did the amazing things for you. And there are many. We can't even begin to count them. Awesome. Thank you. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Absolutely. And when you count your blessings, you won't forget what God has done for you and you'll be able to thank him in the midst of the challenges. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ella. What are your thoughts, Shinge? Um, it's just to add on to what Ella said, you know, if you look in the Bible, all the time the children of Israel were constantly forgetting what God has done. The children of Israel were taken through the desert, they were led out of Egypt, but God always had to remind them. And as human beings, that's our flaw. We, we are so quick to forget about what God has done. So it's like Ella said, it's just remembering where he has taken you from. If he sent Jesus, his son, to die for us on the cross while we were still sinners when we had nothing, what more now in we believe in him so it's remembering the faithfulness his promises to us that if he can give us his son while we are still sinners what more can he do in the situation now when we believe in him when we have declared him the lord and savior so i always like to just take a pause remember who he is and i always like what some people always said it was a friend of mine she always said that in difficult times when you're praising god we tend to tell god of the problems but i like to tell my problems about who god is and pray oh, and thank him and God. remind my problems and my enemies who is my father, who is my God, and I honor him in that way. Awesome. Thank you. Tell your problems who God is, not the other way around. Yeah. Our God is bigger than those problems. Absolutely. I really like that. Thank you for sharing the thoughts, Shinge. What about you, Pastor Halima? Wow. It's splendid to hear everybody speak and uh, from such grateful hearts, you can, under, you can see people and the encounter with the word of God and being sharpened to being grateful. There's so much and I, in emphasis to everything that, uh, you know, Ella and uh, Sister Shingi have said, for me, Thanksgiving, like I said, must become, it must be an attitude. And when it's an attitude, the problem of the season or the time does not matter. Like Shingi said, you start, once it's an attitude, you are grateful when you have, because you have, and you know who has given you, because you already have an encounter with the word of God that says, what is it that you have that God has not given you? So you know, you're grateful because you know you're grateful to a God that has given. Now, on the other hand, there are times when we find ourselves on the encounter of issues, um, confrontations, whatever the, the, you know, the supplication that it could be at a time. He is the God that says you will go through the fire. So the fire will be there. You will go through it. But he's the God who promises that he will be with you in the fire. So whatever the fire, he is going to be with you. So one thing is, I will always be grateful to God. We are, can only be grateful to God because we know who he is. We know his promises. We, we believe in his promises. We have faith in his promises. Being thankful can only be an attitude because you have faith in that attitude. You have faith in the person that you're being grateful to. Look at your children, the ones that have children by, the, by God's grace. They, they, they count on you. Uh, you know, the little ones, they count on the parents. They have no clue, no idea of any other way. That's who sh we should become. No wonder the kingdom of God is for those who are like little children. Because mm -hmm. the attitude of faith can only be like a child. It's an attitude of faith to this God who says, you will go through the fire, but even when you go through the fire, just be grateful. Be grateful because God will be with you. You will not burn. There will be no you know, spark of flame on you. Your hair, your body will not smell of it. Your clothes will not smell of it. How can that be? Only by faith. And God says without faith, we cannot please him. So it all comes together to one thing. It's an attitude. The attitude can only be developed by our faith in God's promises in our life understanding those promises also so that when you're being grateful you're being grateful because you know you know this god encountering with his word you know this god that you read david the book of psalms beautiful psalms always thanking god always calling on everyone 
B1, remember, pastor was preaching on this message and he was speaking about your thanksgiving will liberate others. Your thanksgiving, like Paul and Silas, it will take others out of prison. So your challenge, your situation must take people out of prison. And how? Only by thanking God. People need to find us as Christian women, Christian children, Christian mothers, Christian fathers, Christian adults, Christian youth that are grateful, even in the most difficult time, they must see the difference. When we give thanks, the Bible mm -hmm. says, God says he is with us. He will multiply us. Have faith in that. Have faith in God because he loads us daily with benefits. Sister Ella said something very important. Recall to mind. Take yourself back. Unless you really take yourself back, you can never see what God has done. And if he did it yesterday, what means, what, 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 why, why do you think he can't do this? Sister Shinky said something important. He gave his only son for you when you were a sinner. That to me was beautiful. When I was not worthy, he gave his most important treasure, his son. Can I really give, as humans, will you give your son to the sinner in prison, the, the whoever, the bad names they have been called? Would you? But God did for you and I. So he is worthy of our praise and our thanksgiving at all times, irrespective of the situation. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor. And he gave his son. So what else would he give? Out of it is that thanksgiving is an attitude. And I like what you said, Ella, that the challenges will come. We, we live in a life where challenges will come. So we shouldn't think that because we are Christians, challenges will not come. But how you come out of it is an attitude, the mindset, the mindset is a battlefield. So if we go through it and hold on to because for me, what has worked for me is that at times when I find myself in challenges, I and my mind is running around. I start by pleading the blood of Jesus on my mind just to stabilize my mind for starters. Oh. And then I get into the word, get scripture, some powerful music, um, worship songs, and, and I come out of it praising God at the end. So God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Let's hold, hold on to him and let's know that Thanksgiving is an attitude. Challenges will come, but as we hold on to him, he's faithful. King David said um, something in Psalm, Psalm 103 verse 1. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. That be, he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, but forget not all his benefits. No wonder he was a man after God's own heart, because he kept reminding his soul. He knew that the soul would forget the benefits of God. So he kept reminding his soul, my soul, never forget what God has done for you. We live in a world where um, some Christians tend to be so ungrateful. I know we've all, we've all established the fact that we have to be grateful to God. We have to keep um, recalling what he has done for us. Some Christians tend to be so ungrateful. Um, we've talked about the lepers, 10 were cleansed. Only one came back and Jesus said, well, where are the other nine? And people come to church, they want something, they come every day because they need something, they come in on a Thursday service, on a Sunday service, coming in early, setting up. I know that when the blessing comes or when the miracle happens, you don't see them again in church. And I'm, and I'm wondering, why is it that when we want something from God, we come, he gives it to us. But when, when, we, have, when we have received it, we don't want to come back to him and give him all the glory. So my question is, why do you think some Christians are ungrateful? Why, why would Christians be ungrateful? And also, what are some of the consequences of being ungrateful? I'll start off with Pastor Halima. You see, along the conversations, we have talked about attitude. And ungratefulness storms out of an attitude. So you mentioned something very profound, that a lot of people, Christians, included they they will only turn to god for a need not always for a need or to come out of a situation trust me everyone in life if there's an accident you know think about places like in africa where there's trotro in my country we call them matatu or something 
And I always yeah, remember sure. that when a trotro or matatu is driving, if the driver is being careless and swerving and swerving everywhere, and you're thinking, oh, we're all going to hit into that lorry. Everyone in that matatu calls on the name. Even the ones with the habayas, they'll all say, Jesus. Because at that point, everybody understands that at the mention of his name, every knee will bow, every situation will go. And at that point, everybody understands why there's a need, why there's a crucial moment. But once that journey is gone and they are going, do, do we even, are that in, does, how many of them in that day call think of, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. No, for, it's become a norm, even to Christians, to call upon the name of the Lord in vain. Vain because we call for the needs we have. Vain because we come to church. We, we, all our past, we, we are in awe of our pastors. We respect them for a season because we need, because we've been told, oh, in this season, if you do this, if you do that, this is what you get. That's a, an attitude. It's a selfish attitude. And, and, and that's what it is. For me, I have learned one thing. My good attitude, and I teach the same to my children, is my work. It is my choice. And I have to make good choices. And those choices don't come easy. Those choices come because I have to learn to seek the right places for those choices. I have to learn to read the book of Psalms and understand David, this powerful king, this this powerful man of God that had everything. Yet, every day, this man found a reason to thank God. Not because he needed, like we think, we need to come to God when we need. He had everything, the kingdom. He had the people that believed in him as a king anointed by God. He was anointed by God. He had it all working for him. But whether things were good or bad, he says, as for me, I will wake up, every day I wake up, I will thank God first. Your praises will hail mm -hmm. from my mouth every day when I wake up. Why? Because he had developed an attitude that even made God see him as a friend. So for me, I have learned one thing. The things I'm grateful for, one, every opportunity given. People come in, even into the walk with God as a place to get, to take. They don't come in as a place to make a relationship. I mm -hmm. want to have a relationship with God. I want to love my God. I want to seek him for everything, for, for the well-being of my life, my children, my business, my work, my friends, everything. I want to pray to him for everything and thank him for everything. In fact, I have learned of late that in the Bible says, God knows the things you need before you even needed them. So how about mm -hmm. I just thank God for them? Because he already knows them. My Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you that he is a good man. I thank you that he will be great. He is wonderful. He is, he is, he is. And as I'm thanking God, my attitude becomes that reason that God looks and says, my daughter is ready for this blessing. So to me, I have learned that we, we come, most of, you know, the detriment of it all is that most people are ungrateful because they just want, they are selfish, they just want, and because they also don't have a relationship with God. Once you cement your relationship with God, even your attitude of serving, is not, I don't serve in Solution Chapel to serve because just I'm serving my pastors. I serve God through my pastors. My first light is serving God. Once I've made that my beauty, hello, the waking up, the, the, the late night, the waiting on a call and making sure I'm gonna do it and never getting tired, it is because it is the Lord that gives me strength and I'm grateful. It is he who gives me the power to make wealth and I'm grateful when I give it. It is he who enlightens me with the knowledge and understanding and I'm grateful when I share it. So all these things is all about your relationship with God. To me, 
those who are ungrateful is seemingly just because look at you just think about it think of take your now recall back again think about the days when you had no relationship with god compared to when you have a relationship with god thank you thank you pastor it's all about relationship i think it's it's like what we've been talking about uh pastor lima has been saying attitude your attitude your attitude and gratitude should be a habit now a habit is formed when you keep doing a certain thing good or bad time and time and time and, and time again and before you know it it becomes second nature you don't even think about it and you just do it that's the way thanksgiving should be now if you remember the story of the three hebrew, hebrew boys shedrach meshach and abednego and uh, and the king said you don't bow, bow bow before me i'll throw you into the into the into the fire into the pit so that you can be burned now, if every Christian can have this attitude that these three Hebrew boys had when they said that our God will deliver us, but even if he will not deliver us, we still wouldn't bow down to you. Now, if every Christian can have the attitude of, this is what I need from God in this point in my life. You are thanking God for the husband, you're thanking God for the kids, you're thanking God for the job, you're thanking God for the next level. Even when you don't see it, you're thanking God for it. But what if God does not give it to you? With your thanksies, would you then say, okay, I'm not going to thank him for that anymore because after all, he's not going to give it to me. So what's the point? Let me thank him for something that I think he can give to me. It won't work like that. So we have to have that attitude of those three Hebrew boys that said, our God will deliver us. Our God will provide for us. Our God will give us that husband. Our God will give us those kids. Our God will give us those, that next job. Our God will take us to the next level. Our God will open the, the heavens above us so that the blessings can fall on us. But even if he doesn't, Mm -hmm. I still wouldn't bow to you. I would only bow to my God. I would only thank my God. I would only praise my God. So if we can have that attitude, human beings, human beings, human beings are inherently selfish people. That's, mm -hmm. that's who we are. It is the spirit of God in us that makes us different. It is the grace of God in us that makes us different. Yeah. It's the favor that we see from God that makes us different. It's the calling to remembrance of the things that he has done for us that makes us different. Because otherwise, what's the difference between somebody who just receives a favor and goes away and doesn't even remember that that favor has come his way? What's the difference between you and that person? If you don't, if you don't, if you don't take yourself out from that situation and say, do you know what? My attitude has to be different because I know where I've come from. I know where God has brought me from. So it is because we don't, we don't put ourselves in. And I, and, and I, I said this to, to a family member a few weeks ago, and I said, if until you see peace in that situation that you are in, for instance, you are in a situation of waiting on the Lord for something, whatever it is, whether it's a husband, whether it's children, whether it's a job, whether it is a house, whether it is whatever it is that you are waiting on God for, you have to find peace in your current situation. Otherwise, you will always be agitated. You will always be depressed. You will always be sad. You will not have joy in that situation, that state that you are in. Now, if you don't have joy, we know, like our pastor said, if you don't have joy, how are you, how are you going to thank God? How is Thanksgiving going to come through a depressed state of being? How is Thanksgiving going to come from a sad state of being? Your Thanksgiving, no matter how challenging or sad or, or pathetic your situation is now, remember, that's why I keep saying you have to call to remembrance. Remember what God has done for you before. And once you remember, remember what God has done for you for, it should lift your state, lift your mood, lift you from that depressed state to say, ah, God, I'm sorry for the things, for my ingratitude now. Because see where you have brought me out from. So I, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for my ingratitude now. Now, the, when we start to talk about the, the consequences of being, in, of, of being ungrateful, is like I said, if we take, let's leave, put God to one side. And somebody does something for you, you, you are not grateful. Somebody does something for you, you are not grateful. What would the person in their right mind want to keep doing that same thing and doing things for you? Because they already know that you're not going to be grateful. You're not going to be grateful. It's like, it's like what we've been saying about David. David, when God says that David, God, that David was the man after his own heart, it wasn't because David, David was our sin. I mean, we know how sinful David was. We know, the, the, we, we know how, I mean, to committing murder, to all the, all the things that David did, but yet... God said that this man is the man after my own heart. So that means there is something about David that we need to emulate. There is something about David that God saw and said, this man is the man after my own heart. In spite of all his, sin, his, his sins and his sinful nature, God still said, 
this is the man after my own heart. Because these days, when people, when people say things and people do things and you want to speak against it or say something against it, they will say, after all, David was such a sinful man and God said, it was this, he's the man after my own heart. But do you know why God said he's the man after my own heart? I mean, like, like, like uh, 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 Pastor Lima said, you just need to look, look, look at the books of Psalm. You just need to read the book of Psalm. You need to read all the books the way he talks about David. Where David knows that even when he has sinned, and, and God is saying, so what should I do now? Should I deliver you to the hands of your enemies or should I punish you? He said, no, God, you punish me because I know that there's mercy with you. The, my enemies don't have mercy and they will deal mercilessly with me. So you punish me. I mean, David knew how to, he's like, he's like a man with ego. You know how to boost his ego. He, David knew how to boost the ego of God. He knew how to, how to come in before the presence of God and say, I'm nothing, no, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. It means all about you. It's all about you. If it hadn't been for you, if it hadn't been for you, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like, the, like we say, making somebody's head swell, making somebody's head big. Make it, David knew how to do that with God. That's one of the reasons God said, this is a man after my own heart. It's like he knew how to come Amen. before God's presence with, with thanksgiving and saying, I, I know that you're going to punish me. I know that you're going to do this. I know you're going to do this, but let's leave that aside first. First of all, you are the God of, you are the God of my life. First of all, you are my provider. First of all, you are this, you are that. As in, I mean, if you, even as a human being, if you're telling the human being that, the person has forgotten what you did to him. Because all of a sudden, it's all about these praises. These praises that you are raining on top of me. All these praises that you are saying that I am awesome. These praises that say you are saying that I'm, I'm your friend. You are calling me your friend. That I should come. Come and reason with me. I mean, there are so many things that we, we read in the Bible and we say, and how can God not say David is a man after his own heart? So these are the kind of attitudes that we should have. And the only way we can develop those attitudes is by, having, is by making it a habit. Doing it constantly, constantly. And as human beings, we, it's easy for us to forget. Very easy. Very easy for us to forget when, when something good is done to you, you know. This is why sometimes when people offend me, I, I quickly, so as not to take offense, I quickly think about the good things, the, thing, the times that they, they, they stepped up for me, the times that they do, did good for me. And I, I keep thinking about those things. And this is with human beings. I keep thinking about those things just so I don't take offense by, by whatever it is that they have done now. I think about those good things that they have done. And I'll say, look, it doesn't matter what I remember when this person did this. I remember when this person did this, you know, and then that makes me, you know, forget about whatever offense I think I want to, I want to, I want to take. And this is the same way with God. We have to bring to remembrance the things that God has done for us. Let's let, let our case not be the case of, you know, God has done something. We walk away like the, like the nine lepers and God starts to look for us. Who is this person I did this thing for? As in, he doesn't even see your brake light. You have, you have zoomed off and you have sped away so fast that God has forgotten that. Who is this person I did this, did this thing for? Let, let, our, let our lives not be like that. Let our lives, move, like, like, like we've been saying among, among, among us here, Shingi, Pastor Lima, Margaret, you've been saying. I mean, we can't, let's begin to thank him even before we see the manifestation of the thing. Thank you. I like that. We should give thanks in all things. Um, mm -hmm. King David caught the mystery of thanksgiving. That means he didn't just catch it in a day. It took him time to learn how to give thanks to God. And so in our daily walk, we should know that thanksgiving is an attitude, like he said, but we should, it's a journey as well. It won't, we won't get there in a day. As long as we are making progress, I believe that is, that is the most important thing. What are your thoughts, Shinge? Wow, so many interesting points from all the ladies. So I'm just going to take a little bit from what has been said by both of them. I think some Christians can become ungrateful because of short-sightedness. Mm. I think Pastor always loves to make the church laugh when he says, you get a tiny little blessing and then you think you've arrived mm. and then no one sees you again. <laughs> forgetting that God has bigger things in store for you. You're very myopic. You're very short-sighted. You're not seeing into the future, the future of the ministry, the future of your family, the future of future generations. You receive your 1,000 pounds. You think I'm rich. I've made it. But why can't you invest that 1,000 pounds and make it grow so that your children and your grandchildren are not in debt? So it's short-sightedness and it's myopic. And going back to what Pastor Halima said, it's, what is your intent with your relationship with God? Are we there to always be take, 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 taking from God? So God said the biggest commandment and the most important commandment of all is love. So are you with God because you love him? 
if you love God, as Emmanuela said, whether he does it or he does not do it, because you love him and he loves you. He gave his son when he did when you didn't do anything. You didn't have to do anything for the price of that blood. So are you in love? What is why are you in that relationship with God? We need to have the maturity and stop drinking milk, milk all the time. And it's time to eat meat with our relationship with God. What is our intent? Are we there to take or are we there to serve? So I think as Christians, if we learn and we pause and we look at ourselves, at our relationship with God, yes, we love the preaching about blessings and sermons, but what is our intent with God? Why are we there? And as we, if we are there out of love and we know who he is and who we are in him, the attitude of thanksgiving and gratefulness should grow and start to flow out of us. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. thank you. Our motives are important. Mm -hmm. Why are we coming to God? Are we coming because we love Him? That is powerful. Thank you so much, Shindi. Any final thoughts on the men? Yes, we have to be grateful to God. We have to thank Him, but we also need to imbibe it in our children, because mm -hmm. sometimes I get really riled up when when I see a kid not having the common the common courtesies of thank you, please. I'm sorry. Those three things are so important. And kids need to know from a, from a very early age, from, from the minute that they can, they, they start to speak. They need to know things. They need to know that thank you. They need to know thank you. That's why a lot of times you see parents, they're, 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 somebody gives their, their child something and he says, what do you say? You know, so the kids know we should say thank you. So we need, it's something that we need to imbibe in our children as well. So that and, and when they see us being thankful to other people, to other human beings, be or see us being thankful to our to God, they learn from that. If we don't, if we don't imbibe that, if we are not doing it ourselves, how do we want our children to pick up those habits? So these are I just feel that we need to start everything that we need to see in our society, everything that we need to see in the larger world has to start from inside our homes. That's the only way that people can then to the people can then begin to spread spread the love, spread the gratitude, spread all those good things that we learn from inside. And then we, the children can take them out. And that's the, way, that's the way I believe that, you know, we can begin to grow in these things and spread it across the world. We have to set good examples for our children. We have to live a life of gratitude. And we have to know that in life, it won't be all rosy. He hasn't promised us that it will be, it will be all rosy. But he's, one thing he has said to us, that he will be with us always. So we know that in, even in any challenge, we, should, we know that he is with us. And if there's nothing to thank God for, to say that, thank you, Lord, that you're with me. Thank you that your spirit is in me and daily you are with me. So this has been an interesting discussion. Thank you so much, ladies, for taking the time to join me in the chat room today. And to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Until we come your way again, remain grateful to God for all that he has done.